guys just read Jermel Charlo wants to shock the world at 168, take Canelo's 168 crowns, all of them, then go back to 154 and deem dominance over whoever the winner is, I guess, between Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. But as you guys can see, hashtag Crawford Charlo. So if you see hashtag, hashtag Crawford Charlo, you could tell that's who he intends on winning, Terrence Crawford. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. Is it impossible for Jamel Charlo to beat Canelo Alvarez and to beat Crawford? No, not really. But unlikely, yes. Impossible, no. And let me explain why. Well, the difficult thing is the upward slope. Fighting someone at a weight class that you've never fought in at 168, you know, that's higher than the bigger Charlo's weight. But the only reason he didn't fight because he wasn't ready. Now he's saying, well, hey, let's give the fans what they want to see. Well, if he beats Canelo people, there will be no Jermel Charlo versus Crawford, okay? There will be Jermel Charlo versus Canelo Alvarez again. Canelo Alvarez is not going to fight anyone that he doesn't have a rematch clause attached to, okay? That's just for his own safety, A-side standards and purposes, okay? His own security there. So I don't want to hear that, like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go up there, beat him, whoop him, then come back down. Because if that was the case, why isn't Crawford fighting Jermel Charlo? Well, for one, Jermel Charlo's fighting Canelo. And for two, Errol Spence, most importantly, has a rematch clause, just like Canelo will have. So I don't think that that's the reason why we should be looking at that any other way. Okay, the A-side always has security of the rematch, if they're smart. You know what I'm saying? So I think, if anything, um, Jermel Charlo, you know, has an itinerary that he intends on following but there's a lot of money to make for him. You know, Canelo, he's making that that high career fight purse, which is great for Jermel Charlo. That's a setup fight right there, you know. But if he loses, he can still go back down to 154. Now, I know that won't be as appealing as someone like Canelo and then Crawford because let's say Crawford beats Spence again and then Canelo annihilates him. The only two people that are left standing is Canelo and Terrence Crawford, which Terrence Crawford already stated that he doesn't want to go to 168 at all for any other reason, for no reason whatsoever. So, uh, unless Canelo wants to compromise at another department, you know, and uh, weight class, I don't think that that would work at all. But Jamel's calling it out. We'll see how true it is. I like the idea because I like the motivation and the ambition of Jermel Charlo because Jermel Charlo's talking like, look, let's give the fights, the fans, what we want to see. And we do want to see Jermel Charlo and Terrence Crawford. Why? Because Jermel Charlo started talking smack about Crawford because he was Spence's boy. Nothing more, nothing less. And he was talking the same things that he heard other people say. He can't sell. He's not marketable. Who is he? When is he fought? He's not a real welterweight. We've heard it all. You know what I mean? So I think that ruffled Terrence Crawford's feathers, especially when he knocked down Errol Spence and then called out Jermel Charlo in front of the whole world, actually. You know what I mean? You're next. He grabbed his junk. You're next. And listen, yeah. And Jermel, you know, Jermel had this look like, right? <laughs> so yes, that fight has been buzzing because it has been planted. It has had water on it and the sun is shining upon it. Bars. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Jermel Charlo wanting Terrence Crawford after the Canelo fight. Of course, please subscribe and you guys been counterpunch. Peace.